Okay, uh, I'd like to call uh, the uh, Cable and Broadband Internet Commission to order. Uh, right now we're waiting on uh, a third member, but uh, if we could just uh, take roll roll. Yeah, so uh, is Rob Capone. Luis Rodriguez. And then uh, we also have two uh, prospective members with us. Uh, Jeff Abrams. And Gary Lau. <coughs> and as always, we also have Suzanne Woodland. Suzanne Woodland, Deputy City Manager and Regulatory Council, supporting the committee. Okay. Right. So again, we, we're waiting on Ashley. So we will. We're going to start moving through, but we will not be approving anything. So uh, I guess Suzanne you wanted to get started. Sure. I can talk about preparation, preparation. for a public hearing. Yeah. Um, so my suggestion, based on um, how we've done these in prior years, is one of us. It can be me, you, Rob, or someone else can basically sort of read or kind of cover the topics that are in this simple notice of hearing which you all got which summarizes why we're holding this which is to get input on the next franchise agreement um, so this is kind of if you need to take a few minutes and look it over again since it might have been a week or two before and and then just decide who would like to speak to this like I said I'm happy to do it but I'm also happy to let any one of you do it and um, to open up the public hearing. So we just open it up and like I said, I think first on the list would be assuming PPM TV representatives come as I anticipate, get them in first. I know they have a video that Kevin will help us make sure we can get up and get on the record to talk about what they do. Okay. Um, so. All right. So as far as uh, the statement goes, uh, I'm happy to read it, or what, what do you guys think? Um, yeah, I'm pulling up the document now just to refresh myself with If not, it's attached behind your agenda. Oh, it is. Nice. Perfect. There it is. No public thing. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, I think one of us should introduce it, so I think right, if, sure. if you're okay. comfortable doing it, yeah, I think sure. that would be good just to... Yeah, just quickly go over it, um, why it is that we're even having right. a call to hearing. Um, yeah, results of the survey. Um, yeah, I mean, like how much, so to basically just briefly go over this and then. I think it just helps to set the, it's like a table setting. Yeah. Here's why okay. we're here, and it's another opportunity to educate anyone who may view the video at a later date um, okay. to just kind of summarize you know the the agreement what we can do what we can't do um, and reminder that we did do a survey and also that they're free to submit additional written comments if they couldn't come no. to the hearings so I, I know I had one person who called and um, I don't know whether she will appear but I did suggest if she couldn't um, that she could easily submit written comments yeah. so. right. Cool. And it doesn't have to, you know, if you prefer to leave it open later than January 30, that's certainly within your your purview. But I put a date in there on the assumption we might want to get information back sooner rather sooner. than later. Yeah. Right. So. I think, yeah. I think I think I think 30th is yeah one week. I mean, I know it, my only concern would be that I don't want it to appear like we're just trying to rush this through and it's yeah. I mean, we've already done the survey, so yeah. You know, okay. I mean, yep. like we've right. it's, it's been out there. We have our we've edited our website. You know, we've kind of had this info out there and stuff like that. So I feel like um, you know, and we have drawn some more of an audience and traction. I mean, we've had one, <laughs> which is like a <laughs> you know, two, yeah, yeah. So so you know, we've had some how it how it's come through. It's you know, it's it's gained some traction. So I think that having you know. A week is, is, I think, plenty. I don't know. All right. There will also be a public hearing when we take it to city council. That's, that's what I was going to say. Is this also going to go through city council as well? Right. So, so it definitely gonna, will have yeah, more. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, this has been, this has been so drawn out. But yeah, we don't want to draw it out anymore. So I think that that's plenty. Again, we've we've had multiple chances. This is just an additional chance. So I think that's fine. Yeah, and from my perspective, it was really important to hear from PPMTV, given that one of the key 
pieces of Correct. the contract that we do yeah. have some or historically have talked about and negotiated is that channel for PPM TV and so it would be good to know yeah. how they think they're doing and, and have an opportunity to describe what it is that's out there in the community based on this contract. So, um, okay. So that's all I really have. Um, so I'd say if anyone else um, decides to show up and provide input, you know, just take them in turn and ask for name and, and address on the record just so we know that they're Portsmouth residents or businesses and, um, and get their whatever they'd like to say. Um, there is no time limit in a public hearing, so it's we just ask people to stick to the point, that's all. Yep. all right. This is also recorded and broadcast, right? So that's also yes. part of it, too. So mm -hmm. um, if we don't have much participation, which there's a possibility of, would, would we rather just um, basically give out our information of what's available, you know, or, or do you want to literally go through the information of basically our FAQs and verbalize mm -hmm. everything? Do you know what I mean? Or would you rather kind of just say, like, you know, any questions, here we go, this is how you contact us, FAQs, everything is there, or or, or should we be going over it? Like she said, you, you kind of said that we were going to discuss what we can do, what we can't do, and I'm thinking, like, we're kind of going over what's in the FAQs. Like, would, I don't know, Rob, what do you, what do you think? I don't know. It's, I, I guess my thought is, my only concern is, and um, maybe, it, and I wouldn't mind, to be honest, even though you guys are, Provisionally, members, I really would like to hear. Please feel free to, to yeah. chime in as well. I mean, the biggest thing <laughs> is open like, table discussion. Sort of like, yeah, Robert's Rules of Order. I'd like to joke my quote my dad. We follow Robert's Rules of Order. This Robert, where we try to stay order. So, it, the big thing, I guess, I, I would like to hear from you guys, just because, admittedly, what do you think? Do you, because I have to say, for for the three of us, actually, Ash, who's not here yet, we're a little more technically savvy, but we don't have maybe necessarily always have. Uh, the full pulse of, of the, the population, whereas I guess our quickest sort of introduction with you last meeting, Jeff, it seemed like maybe you are have a different opinion about it. So like, trying to represent have coverage? people yeah. that aren't as astute when it comes to right. I, sorry, I didn't mean to make it sound like a. <laughs> I don't care. Okay, all right. I got thick skin. <laughs> all right. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, different perspectives like hear, right. from right. different Thank parts you. of the community, right. different users sure. versus yeah. people who right. are used to kind of deploying tech. Exactly. So it's nice to have both voices or all voices <coughs> in the conversation. Come on, Ash. I will let make a note on the record here in our minutes that Ash arrived. Thank you, Ash. So we've decided that in terms of the format of the public hearing, at least for the moment, Rob is going to do the introduction yep. and invite members up to the table here so that they'll have access to the mics um, to speak at the public hearing and get a record. So, so and I guess another question then would be, um, as far as this, should I read this verbatim? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking yeah, I, I'd be happy, I'm summarized. probably happy to, to, to read it verbatim. And like, will this, will a copy of this be available online as it well? It is already yeah. online. Yeah. Okay, yep. this is the, right. the notice. Yep. Yeah, so this is, um, yeah, I mean, basically, I'd, I'd say that. And I think that's what I was going to say is we, we do get much more detail on our website. So then my question was, do we kind of just go with this, which is a very kind of top level view, and then just say, yeah, we invite you to. Yes. Please go through and look at any details. And we have a really FAQ. good frequently asked questions section that will answer most people's questions if you have any. And we have a nice contact us button that you can submit, you know, and then yep. and then just kind of leave it at that. That's where I was kind of going. I was like, I don't know how, I don't think I'd want to do that. So I'm leaning towards yep. the shorter, more brief, and then refer to our website and kind of, right, that's it. Um, because yeah, this kind of does just give a pretty tough overview of what. This is all about. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I think that's fine. Just an introduction. Pretty much read it verbatim. Refer to the website. Okay. I think I'm in. I am in agreement. So. Cool. Ash, any thoughts? Or you're good. Any th any thoughts? So good? yeah, we're just talking about during public hearing what 
sort of what's going to happen. Rob's going to introduce, and my question was, and we just kind of decided, just so you understand what we're saying yes to, was I was like, do we want to, if we don't have much public input or, you know, questions, do we want to take that time to really go through all the nitty gritty, like going over all of our FAQs, but we just decided that just going over the synopsis of what this is about, right. and then just kind of really referring to, or inviting people to go look at the FAQs and use the website to submit any questions, and that should be as kind of in depth as we should get. Um, oh, yeah. uh, so I think I so. Think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, don't mean to blind sign you. No, no, no. Okay. I mean, gotcha. <laughs> All right. So are we good for? I think we're good for prep. Yeah. So um, if you don't mind, let's jump back up to uh, agenda item two for uh, approval. Have uh, the committee members had a chance? So approval of the minutes, both uh, public and non-public, from the January third meeting. Have do you guys have had a chance to review yep. them? And I'm cool with the two. Yep. So motion to approve the minutes, both public and non-public. Second. All right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. Uh, is there... Any I do not have any other, other business. business. I do have items that <coughs> are public. I can, okay. can talk about more, but um, I do not have other business. I don't know if you. I could use this time other. to give a brief update on on sure. my meeting that I had. Let me just pull up my notes here. Um, so, <laughs> what kind of came out of the meeting uh, was almost a. Um, almost like a trimming down of, of our original sort of, or my original aspiration of all of this, I think, is is that we kind of came to, um, and especially going through this Comcast thing, is kind of we thought, you know, what, what is it that we're really trying to get out of this and what information and data do we need from these cellular users in, in reality? And um, as, as we kind of noticed with this is like, you know, hard numbers and hard data would be great and in a way if it was easy to obtain, but it's just, it's it's a little bit difficult to obtain it's too much um, legwork, and it doesn't necessarily gain us anything. We're here to represent our constituents, so they're essentially they're, what they're experiencing, regardless of what the numbers say, is really all that we have. It's what our power is, is that our, our people are telling us this. So they were saying that rather than really making this complex, you know, uh, sort of back-end system of location and, you know, running or, you know, possibly getting speed data or to really just, it, it needs to just kind of be a very simple survey. Um, the, that we would be able to just maybe have people, you know, say quick drop-downs of what their cellular provider is and then just them be able to list out in text paragraph where they experience poor service. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And, you know, we were just kind of sitting there going back and forth, weighing, you know, what the sort of benefit of, of more granular data would be versus that's really all that matters to us. And, you know, that's all, that's all that we can really do. And going with this Comcast thing is, you know, we could get numbers, we can get hard data, and, and maybe in a deeper conversation, if, 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 you know, something really needed to be addressed, we would go after that information. But I think, like, for these initial meetings and, and identifying spots that maybe we even already know exist, and that's really what we need to be able to get that conversation started, that we don't need to make this super complicated. It would also make it easier for for more people to just quickly fill this out, you know, rather than making this like a very, you know, convoluted thing. So, um, so they talked about that. They talked about it being, you know, if it is simplified, we could put it out in different formats. We could piggyback off different campaigns. I didn't know if we wanted to do that. I don't know if there's, you know, they were going to tell me if there was anything that possibly could be related to potentially reach a broader audience. Yep. Um, they talked about the it's, I'm blanking on it. The, the new planning. voting this flash, flash vote, vote yep. utilizing something like that, which you know, mm -hmm. in in of itself is very limited because it's very brief in what you can do. It's like 
number of questions five you questions. Five questions okay. just, yeah, and, and just what you can do with it is very simple and brief right. but that's kind of the point of it so so that that's sort of the things that we were going to discuss or I wanted to bring to the table and, and that's kind of what came out of the meeting was we you know there wasn't any sort of re really easy technical way that we could get good data without just really driving ourselves crazy and then we're sitting there wondering what what does that even do does it really improve our arguments or our you know our stance on things it's, it's but it's really it's not it's our constituents what they're saying that's that's really all right. that matters from then on they can go and they can do the research they can go provide numbers to us of of their readings in that area and back it up or or improvement plans or i don't know again so that was kind of where we again is sort of almost like kind of pull back a little bit but i think it's actually better i think it is it's going to be just as strong, essentially, our cases um, in identifying these areas. And as long as, you know, maybe we can use some sort of way to not have our data be too scattered, you know, maybe we use, I don't know, we'll have to brainstorm that later once now that, you know, if we, if we want to kind of adopt this more simplistic sort of survey for potentially flash vote, potentially part of another sort I don't know you know so so because it kind of get the best data you know because we have people just listed out what's that going to look like you know is it going to be street names is it going to be you know, what is that you know and then how are we going to get that data and interpret it like oh at market basket which market basket you know I don't know what that's going to mean so if we you know if we say like I don't know. I don't know what I didn't we didn't get to the from there because that's more of a technical to thing take the, the granular data and actually get anything valuable out of it long term, yeah. So just to fill in a little bit, uh, Lewis met with uh, Monty Bohannon, oh, sorry, I um, that. who yeah. is um, our, what's his title, um, communications and community engagement yeah. uh, person, um, along with, I believe you met Sean Clancy, oh, our assistant yeah. city manager for economic development. Um, because we see this as both a business issue and a resident issue in terms of cellular coverage and and those spots we've been talking about, you know, for a number of meetings, mm -hmm. you know, with regard to a lack of good service, reliable service in certain portions of town or very slow service, um, and how to gather data on that. And I, having gotten a little summary um, from my staff, um, that. They kind of said the same thing. We might be better off kind of getting some simpler information first so that when we kind of initiate the conversations with the cellular providers, here's what we're hearing and see if they have data or do they already know it's an issue and if so, what their plans are for remedying. Because as you know, you know we have had conversations with Verizon um, over the last really two years about coverage issues um, and, and so there have been some conversations so it's really trying to in, continue that conversation mm -hmm. and getting some data uh, really thinking less data and more just that anecdotal experience exactly. that we can share with them because of course people do shop for cell phone service and businesses you know trying to figure out you know, what do I use for my service? So there's an opportunity for them to be responsive, at least even if it is not the hardcore science data that we would like from a technical perspective, but it may be enough to say, hey, this, this is something that needs some attention, and, yeah. and how do you propose to give it that attention that it's due? So that was like the first part with Monty, and then, yeah, the second half with Sean, as she said, uh, is kind of more with the business engagement. and. He said kind of once we have this that he, you know, that we probably meet again and think about ways that we could engage with businesses to include them in, in this in, in some way, whether, you know, they would, again, put this information out on their own channels to kind of really just include this and in, in them in this conversation because they may hold, may hold more weight. You know, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, we, we talked about different ways in which businesses, you know, not only they're customers having cellular service and access in their areas so that they don't have to provide Wi-Fi and be responsible for that. Um, but then also a lot of them are running like square and wireless, right. you know, point of sale systems and stuff like that. Um, so there is, there is, you know, right. so there is like a weight for the business community as well. So um, 
so that that would probably be like a kind of stage two after you know or or they would maybe aid us and, and you know we would reach out to them and try to get that survey out to more eyes or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so those are kind of the two right, approaches yeah. to that that we discussed. So um, I figure at some point we'll discuss this in more detail. Right, and, but it's and yeah. get get you know more you know questions. How do we want it to look? Um, where how do we want to put it out there? But mm. that was sort of a synopsis of. I see. I see this as like twofold. Uh, the first is uh, like areas that don't have good coverage. Second part is you have coverage but bandwidth limitation. Some example. Yep. Right. You have five bars downtown, but can't even pull anything because it's still crowded. So the two approach, right? You could have an area of just five bars but nothing, mm -hmm. no bandwidth. So I see. I see it like where you literally don't have any bars, but where you have bars and you don't have enough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's those are like the things that we might have to try and figure out. How to identify or differentiate, or you know, what does that mean? Um, and, and this is something that I'm sure that they as they, they, they know their business. They but I think monitor. looking at it as as sort of a way to help encourage the integration of the the people that use the system versus the people that are providing the system so that maybe there can be better communication between and we're just there to simply sort of uh, you know, advocate the, the, the communication between the, the providers and the users. Exactly. And they, and they probably have this info already, but just I think it, it might, it's certainly not going to hurt for us to uh, try to get the two talking or at least the information transferred back and forth. I mean, the providers generally they monitor their usage. They monitor their peak activity areas. They have that, but you know, they probably already know the problem areas. Uh, either people have called them, or their sensors that they have on the tower is already always measuring throughput. So. So now they just need to hear from a body like this yeah. one that says, you know, our residents would really like. Right. Better. Service, however, we want to define that service, and and here's what we're hearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean that's uh, so. Yeah, we might be able to differentiate between those kind of two things versus this service or this. I mean, so the biggest thing is going to be I, I'm sure that we're going to have, and I, I'm going to be one of them saying where there's no service, and the biggest issue is as you you just discussed is that the the ISPs are already looking. You know, they know what there is. If you look at their maps, it's not adding up. So that's where I'm going to be pushing on them is we're, we have people experiencing poor service in some way or form in an area that according to your website is fully blanketed in 5G, 4G, and every other G that you got. Why? What's going on? So that's that's kind of my issue is because, they, like you said, they do have the data, but what, according to what I see, there's not a problem. Right. So, so what's going on? So that's where I think I'm, and again, our constituents' voices and what they say is, I'd say, the biggest um, thing in our arsenal that, that we have to, to kind of combat, saying, you know, this, this, this doesn't add up. People are having issues in an area that you say isn't an issue. Right. I, we need you to respond to that in some way. Because it's for, it, it's cellular phone is nowadays a, a lifeline for many people as well, right? right. So it's emergencies I use strictly. So having coverage in those areas would be good good coverage you know their map is too the map is broad you look at and map it tells you like where I live I have like 5g I barely get two bars <laughs> so you know so they these are areas it's more of a safety concern as well mm -hmm. right, so, uh, yeah that's how that's the way I look at it it's, just, it's mostly a safety concern I, I think that's an important element to bring up with more and more people letting go of their landlines and being dependent on cellular service. Right. You know, I think that's a, a piece to kind of bring to, to attention. Yeah. All right. Anything? Now, Millie, this is not necessarily part of the franchise agreement, but do you guys have anything? <clears throat> okay. All right. All right. Um, so, do we want to move into?
closed to talk about the franchise agreement? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right. So, uh, so we motion to move into uh, non-public session to discuss the franchise agreement. And I'll second that motion. And do we also have to motion? We will to after they. Okay. Yep. So yep. Uh, what we'll do is, uh, Kevin, so I, uh, we're going to we, move into non-public. So we're, we we actually voted. Are all, all in right. favor? All, all right. in favor. Yep. All right. Yes. Sorry. Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So yeah, Kevin.
We are, we are back, back in, non in public session, having finished our conversation in non-public with regard to the franchise agreement and renewal. Yep. All right. So, um, motion to uh, request a two-month extension on the franchise agreement to the city council. I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. Thank you. So what we'll do is, uh, if it's okay with the chair, oh, we should also um, seal the minutes okay. of the non-public non session. Non-public. All right. So uh, sealing minutes. Second. 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 All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay hold on. Thank you, Susan. All right. Uh, who made that motion to seal? Uh, again. Okay. You're taking chair charge. Want, yeah. <laughs> to seal. Okay. And who seconded? Me. Thank you. Okay, and all in favor on both. All right, so we'll just wait a few minutes for the. You want to open the door? Yep. Pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks, Jay. You know, if you'd like, we could take a brief five minute recess if anyone. Needs, needs five minutes and then reopen at water. five o'clock for the public hearing. Okay. Okay. I'm good. All right. I'm yeah. All right. Let's do it. Okay. I'm gonna. Yeah. <coughs> and I will check to make sure in case exactly. KPM TV folks are out in the yep. hallway. Nothing, nothing over there. Nothing. You need you need caffeine. Yeah. I've been up since three. Yeah. yeah. Approximately the same. Are you out fishing? Okay. You go out fishing? <laughs> no, no. Um, I'm. Uh, we have an office in uh, Shenzhen, in China. So, oh, so that's when they're off. There's an audit happening, and I support the audit. So three a.m. Good for you. <laughs> It's fun, but then you, you do these long, you know, China, they're already like 12 hours ahead. Then I have Germany, Thursday. You want to take a nap, okay? can you be, Yeah, can you at least take the call from home, or do you have to go into the office to take the call? Um, depends on the nature of the information we're exchanging. Some of them we have to be in a secure room. Okay, yep. Yeah. So I gotta go and do Boston, um, if we're talking, you know, patents, blueprints. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I ha I've had to go into uh, the government center building at 3 a.m. once. Did it once. I'm like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> great, dri great driving. No yeah, traffic yeah, at all. Right. Less than an hour. Made uh, it right. Yeah. But yeah, it might, it might be better to just you know stay in Boston overnight. <laughs> I've done that before when I knew I had to be at 3 a.m. Um, this is the uh, mics are hot because we didn't go into recess. Oh, okay. so. All right. Mics are hot. Now the about your whole business life.
<clears throat> so it's five o'clock. <clears throat> We're going to have you guys sit there. So if you want to okay. formally open up the public hearing. Okay, sure. So pull the mic towards you just in, in case. All right. Uh, so we'd like to formally uh, open the, uh, the public hearing. Uh, we have PPM TV with us. Thanks very much for showing up. Maybe introduce the members of the Cable Commission okay, in sure. case we. Yep, okay, and again, so again, uh, I'm Rob Capone. I'm Luis Rodriguez. I'm Ash Chicory. And then we have a, a few uh, uh, members, hopefully, perspective the, members. Re, yeah, perspective members. Uh, Gary, Gary Lau. Hi, Gary. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. And Jeff Abrams. Hi, Jeff. Nice to meet you. Um, just as a quick introduction. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. Chad Cordner, uh, Executive Director of PPMT, and this is Alexis I'm Alexis Mason. Mason, the President of the Board. All right. Thank you. I'm going right. to open up with a statement just so we get sure. it on the record yes. in case someone else comes in or if they listen to this afterwards, they'll know how to submit comments. Sure. Okay. So the Cable and Broadband Internet Commission invites the public to a hearing on, on, on today. Um, to, uh, to receive comment on the cable television needs of the city. Comcast is providing cable television services to the city of Portsmouth pursuant to a five-year franchise agreement set to expire February 29th, 2024. The commission is in negotiations with Comcast to renew that franchise agreement and seek public input. The franchise agreement does not regulate rates or programming. It covers basic server performance and system requirements, municipal drops, public access, and government channels, and a local office. Internet and telephone services are not covered by the franchise agreement. The franchise agreement is not exclusive to Comcast, which means that another carrier could enter the market. A copy of the current franchise agreement can be found at uh, the city website, HTTP https portsnh.co slash broadband. The commission is conducting a sur uh, conducted a survey last year to obtain information from Portsmouth residents about service and other cable related issues. These service uh, survey results can be found at uh, portsnh.co slash broadband. This public hearing is a further opportunity for residents to provide input. The Commission is also soliciting written comments until January 30th, 2024, for those unable to attend the hearing or who prefer to express their views in writing. Comments can be submitted at portsnh.co slash broadband. They can also send them directly to, Port, uh, to City of Portsmouth. Okay. All right. So um, we have representative from PPMTV. Um, you guys are going to provide a a uh, presentation? Yeah, a little presentation for you. Um, we have some you papers have here. I only have five copies, so okay. you may have to share. That's a good one. Um, over. I can look at your pages. Yeah. You want to get mine? Yeah. <laughs> I got one. I hope that's going to be one entire. Oh, yep. There you go. Okay. Yeah, it's so a we'll probably need here. one more. And I, I can share. I can make an extra copy sure. and distribute sure. after Thank the meeting, so it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Sure. If you would like, it's okay. 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 We'll catch up later. Okay. All right. Well, I would like to open up here with a little video I have. Um, we created this past year. Uh, it kind of gives a breakdown so it can show members uh, who are not. Um, maybe I was going to say, I know Kevin is here. Yeah. He was willing to help broadcast this I could, so we could grab it. Yeah, I could I could go that drop it on. Why don't you, uh, yeah, you know where Kevin is, right? I uh, do you have don't. it on a flash drive? Um, I could probably put it on a flash drive very quickly. Let you... me, uh, yeah, that, I think that would work because I'm thinking then we could just play it up. Kevin. Right up there. Hey, He's Kevin. been listening. Hey. <laughs> uh, SD card. This one. Or I don't think that even has it. Do you have a? Um. Oh, we have a. 
Wait, what's in here? Yeah, to see what's in here. I thought it would be nicer if we actually capture it. Yeah, it would. Yeah, put it on the projector. Yeah. Which I don't think there's any on Zoom, so we don't have to worry about sharing right. it. I'm just going to drop it on the main thing. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Too. Cool. This is going to be a lot easier than. Yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I should have let you know. I, I, I thought about call that. Call for backup. Was, yeah. <laughs> the name of the uh, file? Um, it might have gone in one of the folders. What's your story? I think that was up toward the top. Is it now? Yeah, what's your story? Oh, yep. so I can actually broadcast that. Okay. Click yep. and open it. Awesome. Yep. So we're going to give him a moment. Okay. Great. 30 seconds. Thank you. Get his exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Was that coincidence? That he, did he just sweep in at the right time? No. He's no, we're, yeah, he's, <laughs> we're recording this. We I wasn't sure if he was typing it. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just his keen psychic ability. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. It could be. He's been doing it for a while. Anticipation is probably part of his oh, I would imagine. resume right. <laughs> around this building. We just figured if you were coming here, this was an opportunity to really make sure we capture. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, Susan. We appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. He's ready. All right. All right. So I think, Kevin, I can just click on the what's your story and play that, I'm assuming. I'm going to try that, see if that works. So when we first started up PNH 400 and we learned from people what was one of the most important things that they wanted us to do or capture, during our 2023 anniversary year was oral histories. We couldn't have done that anywhere else. And we, and we looked, we looked at the high school, we looked everywhere to find uh, somebody that could help us to both film and edit. And PPM TV was the place to come to. I think the biggest impact that I've seen uh, is the um, programs that they've set up with the local schools, young aspiring artists or folks that want to get into the industry, being able to come in here and get access to uh, like editing bays, cameras, microphones, all the equipment that maybe individually they wouldn't have access to, I think is invaluable for someone who's really growing in the industry. So some of the resources that we've used are the video editing software that's available, such as Adobe Premiere Pro, as well as the studios that they have, all the filmography tools, such as the cameras, lights. And my experience has been great so far. The staff at PPM TV have been always so helpful in trying to get these oral histories done. From the perspective of recording oral histories to editing and any other questions that I might have, they've just been great, as well as the studio as a whole. The value for PPM TV is in a especially Portsmouth community where arts and so many special events and city events are going on. You need to be able to have an agency like PPM TV to be out in, on the ground in the field covering these type of things and allowing the voices of the community to be heard. So we're really grateful for that partnership. I've been doing the holiday parade now for 10 years and PPM TV has been right there along for that journey and they always bring 100% energy and excitement into that project and I couldn't be more grateful. 
space, time, technological expertise, the ability to be taught, the ability to express yourself on video or through audio production. That's what PPM TV has to offer the community. And the people that work here are the key to making that possible. I want this station to remain a community and a part of the community in itself of Portsmouth because it's such an amazing community once you get involved in it. It's a very unique place that offers very unique resources to the community. Um, and being able to participate and give back to the community uh, at this station has been hugely impactful in my life because it sent me off to a career in Dodo and then brought me back here to Portsmouth. All right, so that, yep, that's just uh, some of our members and, and employees and uh, some projects we've done over the years. Um, I have a little uh, thing here to, to talk about, and I'll just go over it and uh, explain kind of what we are and, and what we do more on an analytical aspect. Um, so we have three staff members. Um, we have eight board members. Um, PPM TV, uh, our mission is to act as a vibrant uh, source of local news, views, information, arts, and entertainment to the greater Portsmouth air, uh, area, uh, broadcast via Channel 6, Comcast, uh, and online uh, video on demand. Um, we air a diverse catalog of staff and member produced programs that aim to bring the Seacoast community closer together. Above all, we focus on education of television and multimedia as well as a platform to share their video content. Um, PPM TV has been in operation since 2011. It uh, originally started with a single staff member and two volunteers. Uh, now it has three staff, two interns, and 25 plus active annual members and volunteers supporting our station. So channel six, uh, currently with our tightrope system, we have 2,850 programs in our library. Uh, so that's what we're able to, to air on our station. Um, that's uh, local and national peg media. Um, <clears throat> So since we're not regulated by the FCC, we don't really have a, a great idea um, how to get numbers and, and viewership. So we kind of base our viewerships off of our YouTube channel. Um, so our, our current YouTube channel has 13,000 subscribers, uh, 695 videos, uh, and a total watch, uh, or total views of 4.1 million. Um, we have an average of 12,000 uh, hours watched per month. Um, we're obviously a local access television station, and those numbers are pretty intense. Um, to look at in, in a comparison of other stations in the area, so PPM TV with 13,000 subscribers, 695 videos, 4.1 million views. Um, if you look at Exeter TV, which is not just community and education, they're also the, um, the government side of it. They have uh, on their YouTube uh, 1,170, Nashua has 3,540, um, Concord has 1,630 subscribers. Um, their videos are kind of, it's hard to tell the amount of videos that they have compared to because of their meetings, because they have their meetings are always posted on their their YouTube so we don't have meetings at PPM TV that are aired so our videos would actually reflect their uh, numbers if we had the, if we were also the government side of it um, but to look at the comparison on views the total views for those four stations on their channel is 2.6 million views for all of those public access television stations we have 4.1 million views um, that in itself speaks a lot to the station and what we create and what people want to watch in our viewership and our membership, spreading that out, being able to see it. Um, those members and organizations include Portsmouth 400, Chamber of Commerce, Players Ring, Black Heritage Trail, Seacoast Senior Centers, Temple Israel, Priority One. Living and Learning with Disabilities, Catholic Mass Hour, uh, Money in the Movies, Center for Wildlife, New Hampshire uh, Council of Aging, Jai Institute for Parenting, New Hampshire Humanities Roadshow, and then a couple theater projects, um, Prescott Park and WSEA. 
Um, so those are some of the members who are creating content and sending them to us or we're assisting them in creating content. They're using our station for gear rentals. They're using our station for a place to film their content. They're using us as staff members to help them film their content on location. Um, we also work with schools, uh, UNH, we have interns from UNH, currently we have one intern from UNH. We have five uh, um, students from PHS that are interning at our station uh, to learn about television broadcast, creating, educating, all the aspects of what film and, and this industry offers. Um, I personally witnessed six students graduate in a career in film and television in the seven years I've been in PPM TV. So, we're not pushing them away from the industry is basically what I'm saying. They're coming in, they're learning a lot. I've, ho I've heard on many accounts that they've learned more with us than they did at their college. Speak to what you can about that, but you know, we're showing them a real life experience in television and, and film, and we're all involved with television and film. Um, so we know how to, how to learn for careers. And this is a great place to be able to learn those skills and find other people to learn them with you. Um, one of our uh, students actually is Jake Webb. He was at the end of that video, and he is an employee now at PPM TV. So he came back from Alabama uh, to come to Portsmouth to work at PPM TV. Um, so that says a lot about what we uh, kind of created here as a community for um, Portsmouth Public Media. Um, this right here, Alexis Mason, uh, she has been a uh, <laughs> she's been a member since um, the start of it. Uh, she came in with a workout show, which you saw in the video. Um, she's been doing it for longer than 2011. You started eighty-five early. years. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, she's now she was a board member. She became a board member. I did, and now she is the president of our board. I am. Um, I'm going to toss it to her just as a um, not from a, a staff perspective, but an experience perspective. I came into uh, Ports of Public Media TV in 2012, I estimate. I've been there since. I have an, had an active television show, which has run continuously throughout. We have garnered an international audience as a station but through, fortunately, the fact that, believe it or not, one or two people in the world actually want to exercise. Uh, they're out there, maybe not as Americans, but they're out there. <laughs> uh, and I came in when uh, a few of you may know the name Bill Humphreys. Bill Humphreys was, uh, yes, Bill Humphreys is still uh, the, the, the grand, he, he is still our grand wizard, I would yeah, say, I and ultimately. Uh, I've been with the station, so that's 12 years. Wow, where the time goes. 12 years now, and I have seen not only interns come through and become part of a larger family, devote their effort, give more than they were asked to give, learn more than they expected to learn, but also graduate into, well, we have Kevin, who's, who was, as you know, uh, a staff member with PPMTV, who now works for the city. We were able to bring Jake back, and these are all, these are folks who have given more, again, I can't stress enough that these folks have given more to the PPM TV family than was ever asked of them. And being that we are a nonprofit, of course, we pay peanuts. It is what it is. We are a nonprofit, you know, but people who come in, come in with true heart. Uh, we have a local personality, Roxy Zwicker. Many of you may know New England Curiosities. She is the uh, ghost hunter of our station, who is one of the long running ghost hunters, I will call her, I will say that loosely, in Portsmouth. And she continues to not only share her time with us and her expertise with us through, through her own company, with her own company and her own productions, but also as a, as a member, as a, as a family member, as a staff member of PPM TV. Uh, we would absolutely love to see 2024 now that we're in our new home. We were located over at the Meeting House, which as you might know is the, the building at the top of the hill that represents Portsmouth so well in all of our pictures. Uh, but we, we've moved. We are now over at the Fox Run Mall. We have more space to store our stuff. We have a lower rent and we are very much hoping that we are able to move forward into not only developing, continue to make these numbers, these incredible numbers. I mean, if you, again, I can't stress enough, Chad takes these stations, you add, add up all of our local neighbors. Nashua in comparison to <laughs> Portsmouth for population, Concord TV in comparison to Portsmouth population, I mean, who, that that's, we're we barely ranking 
And yet there it is. There it is in black and white. 13,000 subscribers for 4.1 million views. So coming back to that, we're hoping that our new home is able, enables us to not only, of course, garner more financial support, uh, being that we are a nonprofit, we can't do it without that, but of course to pull in additional community members, strengthen ties with the Portsmouth High School, with UNH, hopefully with Great Bay. We have a lot of great plans and we just need some feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. We need some people flying our flag so that we are not we are not alone in our tiny family mm -hmm. of getting the great word out there and I would say that we have been an integral part of almost every event we're again the fourth Portsmouth 400 we cover the parades uh, we are the people who put the put put these events on television enabling members of our community who would not have access to events otherwise to see and enjoy the Portsmouth the holiday parade, the um, Halloween parade, the 400, getting down to Prescott Park for the Arts Festival. As we all know, there are a number of people who couldn't and wouldn't be able to visit these events, so we are able to bring it to you. And I have to say, I'm a pretty proud member, Bob, clearly, if it, if it, if it didn't give it away. Uh, and I think we have a very strong board. We have a very strong base of support on our board. We are always looking for additional board members. So if you know of anyone, don't hesitate to uh, plant the seed in their ear. We are definitely looking for people who have this, a similar buy-in that we do to encourage and enable our organization to grow. I'll give myself a little. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's yeah, that's us that's in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Where are you at the mall? Yeah, so we are at, um, do you know the mall fairly well? Okay. Yeah, about yeah. as much. Men's Warehouse. Mm -hmm. When you're driving around the mall, there's an external entrance to Men's Warehouse. I don't know where it is. Well, okay, so if you are, we are in the... I'll, I know I'll Macy's, say. I know Jordan's, uh, We're Penny's, I mean. Close. I know Jordan's. Do you know where Santa sits? <laughs> where? Santa? Yeah, Santa. Right we're, behind where right Santa behind would Santa. sit. Right behind Santa. Next to your Yes. Wow, nicely done. <laughs> I don't think he's there. Yes, he must have kids. kids. <laughs> I love movies. So. Um, but our actual our actual address uh, was not mentioned is um, we're actually above Jumpin' Jays, one Middle Street. Oh. That's where our server is. That's okay. where our office is. Um, but our studios, studios where members yes. can come and that's create. What I figured. Yes, so that's where you can go to. I was going to say how much square footage is there above Jumpin' Jays? Not enough for a studio. Not much. <laughs> enough for a, a hot room. So. Enough for us to broadcast. Yes, enough for the broadcasting yes. system. So maintain our ports with presence and. We've seen a quite we've seen quite a bit of support for the community through the Fox Run Mall. They're doing outside of PPM TV. I'll give a high five to the Fox Run Mall for very being a very strong presence. They are doing a terrific job. Uh, one woman in particular, Jenny Sidlick, who has been our uh, emissary, I guess you say, she has ushered us in with a red carpet, and they are doing a great job of bringing in a number of the Portsmouth business owners who may not be able to. Well, for lack of a better phrase, afford to put up a storefront downtown. I think we all know that's not exactly an easy jump. And so they are creating much more of a community center, I might say, a hub in the community than, than we've seen before, than, than any corporate mall I've ever, I've known prior to. And so we are on the Walmart side, FYE. We are on the Walmart side of the mall. Um, but definitely come in, we're, we're there. Yeah. We're there. We're got to sign up. So got to get an um, idea for a show. Yes. You know, we'll pull um, you in. Who should I call to arrange that? I'd love to see the studio. That would be this hey. gentleman right uh, here. The number? Yeah, sure. 603 205 3941. And hopefully the political calls slow down in the next few days because <laughs> you can always text. Want to see it? Yeah, yeah. Love that. Happy to have you come by. Yes, yeah. I'd love to have you. Mm. Um, so yeah, so I guess you know I'm the, our, our biggest relationship to you is is sort of through this Comcast franchise agreement, um, and where you're kind of mentioned in that agreement is is in sort of the what you recently just took advantage of was moving locations and being able to get that drop put in and everything done. Is everything? I mean, it seems like everything's gone really well with that, and there's really no qualms, nothing that we need to bring up with Comcast. Um, we're we're hoping to keep. That you know, one of the things that we're looking to do is you know keep everything, keep you guys in that. So I think that that's part of the reason that we're kind of speaking with you is because you're in it now, and we're yes. hoping to kind of 
use the same language as before, essentially. And so, um, yeah, we just want to kind of make sure that so far everything has been upheld, the contract, and everything's been good. So, you know, so far that seems good. Um, and then, you know, I don't know if it's worth going over um, anything we've looked, you know, we've discussed other details and because as part of the financial agreement is there's that's part of how your revenues come from um and i don't think we need to go into the details of that um but that was just if there was anything that you had to say i guess with regards to that i don't know if that's anything that we want to talk about or if that's too much but i mean if if not there might not be anything really to say i don't know um but that's kind of our relationship to you through this contract and your relationship to Comcast, Comcast and the franchise agreement, mm -hmm. um, essentially. Um, but I do like what you guys are doing. I like that Thank you guys you. are around. So yes, I applaud. So everything's been great. Um, I do, I do. And then I have other questions as well, but it's kind of an aside, not related to this, just sort of what your plans are and what you guys are doing uh, for other plans, but we can talk about that later. Um, That's great. We love we love that you're generating ideas. Yeah, yeah. Um, in regards to the HD, uh, I know that the um, the government channel was given HD, and I think PPM TV was in that question for that. Is that so? You don't have I HD. I thought that was already. Settled. I thought it don't, was already set too. I don't. Recall. I don't believe we're okay. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. Yep. I All right. remember the con it was 2019, <clears throat> right? Yeah. That, uh, yeah, we've had it now for a couple of years, and I could check. But yes, whatever yeah. we had in the contract yep. was fulfilled from the government side, yep. but off the top of my head. Yeah. Okay, so we could add that to the re request list. Awesome, yeah. thank you. Oh, we'll that would be that. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I thought that we had discussed that, and we discussed it as already having been done. So right, because I just assumed if they'd done it for the government channel, they'd done it for you. I think that was maybe my... We'll check into Yeah, I, I could yeah. be wrong, um, but I just, it no, seems. We haven't heard. Haven't, yeah, yeah I don't remember. we haven't received. And it was 2009. I was uh, the uh, studio operations manager at that yeah. time, too, so I'm, I'm not, I wasn't in the meeting or anything like that, so yeah. I, I didn't see okay. whether or not that happened. Yeah, these things. Yeah. Totally yeah. things yeah. that we don't want to know and want to hear yeah. Yeah. Um, as part of all of this. Okay. I have a quick question, which you may or may not be able to answer. We were, and I, it's, it's a huge plus for us to be further up the dial, but we were at channel uh, 98, which we're now, we've now been um, given the, the privilege of being moved into the single digits. Uh, how, how did that happen? What, just out of curiosity, we, are, we don't have any idea. We, don't get me wrong, we're loving it. Um, Comcast generally has the right to move, as long as they make it available. They have the right to move it around oh. in the sort of suite of what they offer on the basic tier. Okay. Um, I, you know, I think the reason why I thought you already have it is because it's the upper channels are the HD. Mm -hmm. I thought uh. you had been offered an upper channel, um, but I'm going to definitely let me follow up on this and I will just get back to you. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah. And if it's not something you have and that you're not entitled to right now, I will, we can certainly take that into our negotiations, I think yeah. it would be fair to say. Yeah. Uh, what, what would determine whether or not we were eligible for HD, do I'm we gonna know? I'm going to reread the contract yeah. carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds I fun. I was under the assumption you already had it, so, yeah. Great. Okay. to think if we have any additional questions um, we met before we, we we and i chad and i met before we came over and we're trying to think of i don't know that we have too many a franchise agreement would be another five years it's it's in the as far as the uh the duration it's something that we put in every agreement so sometimes we can the, the previous one was five years but we're sort of kicking around the idea, like, do we want to do another five year or do we want to do 10 year? So. And that's just deciding whether Comcast is the provider in no. the no. spectrum? What is that? Uh, the, so the, the agreement is, I'll break it down really quick. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the agreement is a, a essentially a, an additional fee for cable broadcast subscribers only. So only like that portion of the Comcast bill, only what's being put out over the cable and what they're paying for that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Um, and it's the franchise agreement. Essentially, we are not. It's not holding. We're not. It's not being, exclusive. It's right. not exclusive. We're not being held to any sort of exclusivity agreement with Comcast or anything. There's really not that type of agreement with them on, on our part. We have no commitment essentially to them in, in that case. So um, the longevity agreement really just means when we're going to have to sit down and revisit this okay. this again and look at it. Um, yeah, we're looking at potentially making it longer. Um, there's lots of factors that we've been discussing and, you know, whether, you know, viewership is going to be going down, whether you subscribe, you know, what, what's that going to look like in the future? So we're thinking about that as well. Um, there's not really anything that we can do to control that. Mm -hmm. It's just things to, to keep in mind. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of what we're at right now. Assuming we go to a streaming only uh, world, which I think obviously that seems realistic, right? Um, because what you're talking about is viewership on cable channel. Right, so that's the, the, the franchise agreement. It, it only applies to the television portion of yeah. their bill. So, yes. So, it, it's as the trending looks at this point in time, more people are cutting the cord and they're going to stream versus just television. So, those subscribers, if they stay with Comcast, will not have a franchise fee. Mm -hmm. So, that that is definitely, I think that's where you're just sort of... But it's hard to say. Like, the, the the big thing is, is as far as TV goes, there's still a lot of things that are carried as TV only. Like I know Nesson is only available on you can't stream it currently. So there a lot of I think for sporting events, I know that my sister in law maintains it specifically because she follows football and baseball. Yeah. So she continues to do television as part of her Comcast bill because that's that's what uh, she needs to do in order to get sports. So a franchise fee would only it would go away if. Yep. Cable goes away and streaming takes over. Yes. But right. no, I mean, no conversations of negotiation whether or not that. Fee They're not would sharing be. that. I think that's a business level thing. They have not shared that with us okay. as far as what their plans are. And to answer your question, no, I you can almost guarantee that fee will not roll over to any sort of thing because of the way that this fee is structured because it's a federal. Like this is like a federal fee yeah, she's saying that is probably. being done on cable, you know, coaxial cable delivery of content. Yeah. Um, that if anything, so there, it, it wouldn't pivot. It wouldn't. It's essentially it would be. So, yes. I mean, you know, I've had I've expressed in meetings in my tinfoil hat idea of what if Comcast just decides to switch how they deliver it. Yeah. If they now say that yeah. toss the cable boxes. Now, you know, now there's Wi-Fi boxes on the back of your TV, and you can still get cable. Whether they would, you know, that would, that would essentially, yeah. I mean, I don't, we don't know. There's a bunch of what ifs. Yeah. These are things that we've discussed. Um, again, there's things that are within our power, and the things without our power. Really, the big thing right, we're looking at right now is the contract, and its current language. Um, what we would want to change, which again, it's very limited to what we possibly even could do. Um, making sure that parts of the contract were being upheld, um, and and then kind of the longevity of the, f the next contract. Um, it's kind of, I think, a breakdown of what variables are actually being talked about. Um, you guys answered, I think, I'm going to ask my questions anyway, just to make sure that I'm not just taking, but, um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to know was, yes, your viewership for, for cable subscribers, and you answered that, you can't really get that, so you're using um, YouTube stats, essentially, kind of, to, to look at that. Um, and then, and then you sort of answered my question about, I was, like, thinking what is, you know, how important is your ability to broadcast on a cable channel to you? And yeah. I think you did bring up, at least you verbalized a good point of, you're able to provide this to people who might not go and go to the website and go to, mm -hmm. so so there is an importance to it. So to yeah, answer my question it. for you, that's kind of what I got, was that, that there is, because that was another part of the, the agreement is that you guys have a channel. So so um, so I kind of want to know what, what your feelings were about that, but I think that it seems like you do think it's an important piece to be able to reach that broader audience that might not otherwise be able to get that information. Yeah, that whether uh, disabilities, mm -hmm. you know, take you away from being able to go down to see the parade or even when COVID was going on, people didn't really yeah. want to go down and see the tree lighting. So we 
filmed that and put it up so people could see that. So it it is it is very important, but. I mean, is Comcast at all involved in the way that you guys do live broadcasting? I don't know if that's more of a cellular thing, which is another whole other can of worms that we're involved in. But um, do you guys do like any sort of like beam? Is there any sort of I don't know what you guys use for like live broadcast of video? Do you guys do live broadcast like that that would require technologies and service? We, we only have ever gone live downtown through um, like Sling Studio. Okay. To YouTube, got it. And then from YouTube, playing on our screen at our station, clicking the live switcher over, yeah. just letting that play. Yeah. And there's a lag, yeah. but um, that's the only way we've ever been able to go live remote okay. on television. Mm -hmm. So when the technology becomes cheaper and, and easier to access, we would love to be able to just bring a small box down there and go straight live to our channel. Um, and I know I think there's ways that you can do that, um, but I just haven't explored it enough. But I find YouTube to be it's obviously important because you just put a link up and any people who don't have cable can watch it there as well. Mm -hmm. So we li live stream to YouTube, you can see it on YouTube, the link is on our, in our social media pages and then on Channel 6. Or 98 at the time, you could watch it on that too. So it's. Do you, do you pay a fee to YouTube f to use them? Or no. Free. Mm, it's free. It's just the free. Service. Fortune. Shh. Don't let them hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that there's. I know YouTube does um, like monetization and, and you can make revenues out of that. Right. But just because of, you know, what public access station is and also the amount of locals that are sending content in, it would be. I, I would think it wouldn't be a, uh, an appropriate um, source of income. Mm -hmm. As I understand, it's because and Bill Humphreys explained to me years ago, and maybe something has changed, but we are unable to monetize our videos because we are a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a bit of a that's a yeah. yeah that's a restriction for us. Yeah, and YouTube's weird because they advertise. You're not supposed to advertise on public access, uh, but yeah. they do. That's, they advertise all over our channel. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but to speak further to, uh, we have received really great feedback from the community. I, I can only speak from my show, but I know that we've received this in other places, again, the parades and whatnot. Uh, but I have received, uh, what's come back to me just through the fitness show is, and this is through, comes through the senior center filtered to me, that people are so grateful to have access to some sort of fitness programming through our through the station through their television because they don't have they, they're not paying for internet uh, they can't afford they're they're restricted and they can't get to the senior center they can't get to a fitness facility so that one little program is touching people or is touching that community that that may for a litany of reasons are restricted from getting further outside of you know out, out into what the rest of us might consider normal resources or tapping normal resources it's been we get terrific feedback we we are just we're always and anytime someone calls or we get a little letter we all share it amongst each other so it's a it's a it's a it's a great family to be a part of uh, on, on the peripheral note I have before I forget and I'm, I think Chad you've explained this to me but I'm not clear I'm not sure I understand it so I'm gonna put it out there and maybe someone can expound upon it we I, I know that we are we're broadcasting from Portsmouth but we are able to say if you're living in Greenland what are what is our Circle Greenland Rye, Stratum, Stratum, Stratum Newcastle, Newcastle, Newington. Newington now, what? How for? Does that just air? Is it? Is it just? And again, forgive my ignorance. Can they pop on Channel Six and there we are? Or as it was explained to me again years ago, Bill Humphreys shared with me that what would need to happen for say Rye or another town to watch our programming, to air our station, was that there would have to be, an, someone would have to approach the town. They would have to get permission. The town would ha then have to connect with Comcast, and then, then, and only then, could the opportunity of, of airing be explored. So that while we may be able to, from our end, able to broadcast to these areas, are they seeing us? And do we have any influence over that? So I'm happy to look into that again. I remember having these conversations back when we set up PPM TV. 
but rather than trust my memory, and of course sometimes procedures change, Yes. Um, I'm happy to look into that and report back to you and let you know, um, confirm the communities that are covered within our distribution area, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which as I recall used to be at least the couple of adjacent communities of Rye, Greenland, Newington, and Newcastle, I think, at the top of my head. Um, and I do recall there was a bit of a process step, um, but I'd rather um, find out anew for you just in case anything's changed Thank or you. to confirm, and I can follow up with you on that. Great. We're just going to keep so, putting stuff on your plate here, Susan. It's okay. <laughs> that tends to happen. Now, Kittery is, a, of course, in the, it's an entirely separate state. Would that be something that we could explore? Uh, I would just have to see where the distribution Gotcha. So that would it's, all fall under that, that same that's umbrella. Kind of wherever their technology I if it was a state kind of line sits issue. and how they. Okay. Um, and I don't know the answer. Like yeah. I said, I, I recall this came up when PPMTV was first born, um, but I don't yep. recall gotcha. the answer off Appreciate the top of my that. head. Thank and, you for looking into it. it. Change. So happy to look at it. Thank you. Get back to you. Yep. Now, are you guys. Um, <clears throat> Are your services are like are they paid services? I see like you guys organizations and members that you're involved with. How how does that work necessarily? Um, you know, like you know, Center for Wildlife or I think I saw them on there. Yeah, you know, they, they want to make yep. some content. They would reach out to you and how does that work? So <laughs> um, uh, many different aspects there. Uh, if you want to become a member and have full access to all the equipment, all the gear. Um, some staff education for us to help you create your content. Originally, um, I believe it was intended that you become a member, we'll educate you how to create your show. Once you know how to create your show, you have volunteers help you with your show, and we help the next group that's looking to create that. Okay. Um, Center for Wildlife uh, is an example of a sponsor, so we assist them with um, various projects that they're doing, and they assist us with some financial and um, advertising and just general awareness because that sometimes is our biggest problem is awareness um, so when you're a member just an individual member it, mainly it's because you're creating content um, you want to come in and use the studio um, to create your show your talk show and you don't know how to do it you just know you can sit in front of a camera and talk um, they come in to become a member uh, and so, depending on the, 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 I guess the drive on, on the member and what they're really looking to get out of it, um, we'll either assist them on almost every show that they want to create, um, then we would take that content and put it on our air, um, or we would find other volunteers of our member, our member-based volunteers and have them assist the member create shows um, we have like stage rentals because a lot of theater uh, groups in the area they don't have places to rehearse uh, so they're looking for a, just an open room to be able to use to rehearse so they can rent our studio for an hour or two hours to rehearse inside our studio um, and that basically just pays for the lights that they turn on um, an organizational member uh, ship is you know, say the Portsmouth 400, and they have a ton of people on there, um, and uh, you know, this person's going to come in to film, and this person's going to come in to film. We give up to five different passes, if you will, in an organizational member membership, where five of those individuals can use the station under an orga organizational membership. Um, we'll educate them, teach them everything that they need to do. No, but it's just kind of a, a bigger package of what you get to use and it's a lot of it's based on insurance um, when they're in our space um, we want to make sure that they're insured we're insured and everyone's safe um, if with a lot of volunteers and, and you know people coming in and if they're there you know potentially after hours editing we want to know that who they are and if they're a member of the organization um, so it's kind of a way to keep track of, of you know who's using the space and um, you know what they're using it for um sponsors are people who are looking to be involved with us partner with us um 
trades. Obviously, if you advertise for us, we'll advertise for you. Um, if you, you know, become a level three sponsor, you can have a certain amount of sponsorship um, awareness on our channel, on our pages, on our wall, um, that kind of thing. So, cool. Thank you. And then interns, um, they're just volunteer internships. Um, and student memberships are, are um, a, a way for a, a college student to be able to have an affordable place to create content. So um, we've offered that at, at very low rate because um, we know that going to college is expensive. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a place to actually you know, be a member of or be a part of the community, then you're at home trying to figure out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, what gear do I have, and so. While it is a bit of a sideline, we are, as Jake discovered, the only resource for green screen filming for people who are interested in filming a degree between here and Boston. So if you know anyone who needs a green screen, <laughs> we're pretty proud of that. notes, I think. Those are all the little questions I had. Yeah. Well, that was an easy quiz. <laughs> uh, it was easy. It was mostly, you know, like I said, it was mostly just to hear from you. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance. I know we spoke briefly, but um, yeah, no, this is great. Um, is there anything else that you think we should cover? Anyone else? You mentioned you love movies. We're going to be running a movie night coming oh, up too. Yeah. So yes, okay. yeah. We're at, at the Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, um, we've done uh, meet me at the meeting house when we were over at the meeting house, um, and uh, we would just have random shows of local producers. Um, On the Wing was a documentary that uh, was created. Uh, it was a World War II documentary created by members of our organization. Um, to have a premiere, uh, you know, kind of red carpety type um, film festival where people can come watch movies, have popcorn. Um, and we've done, uh, we've also purchased rights of, uh, you know, I forgot the name of the movie, but for an example, It's a Wonderful Life. You can uh, rent it, purchase the copy to be able to have it played at public, yeah. public mm -hmm. viewing. So, uh, we've done those before just to generate people to come in and see the space because awareness is a big thing and it's hard to be seen I guess in, in everywhere it's number one the community, so. speaking of being seen it doesn't we didn't put this in here but we'll toot our own horn again since we have a microphone to do it with uh, we we did produce we an Emmy winning movie at our tiny little station yes. um, <sighs> A Not On This Night was a holiday movie produced by Stage Right Films, which won the New England Emmy for uh, what? Best, we, how many? Best Actor. We took um, home. Best Director. Uh, nominations for editing. Uh, nominations for filmmaking. Uh, set design. A uh, whole bunch of things. Uh, that's the, the New yeah, England. Thank you. Um, it's a big one for, yes. for a local station. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's cool because we all went out uh, to Boston and, uh, you know, get to see all the TV stations, you know, Nesson and all those channels that are up there getting awards, and you're like, PPM TV. <laughs> <laughs> this makes sense. You know? Swimming in the big but, pond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Was that this year? Or this it's a couple year? of years ago. 2000, it started, uh, 21, 2021. Huh. Was, I remember right when kind of things were all opening back up and everyone was Excuse still me. masking and, and so we were able to, to put it together. And, so. all right. and PBS ran it yeah. this PBS past Christmas. It. We made it to PBS. Yeah, that's a big deal. It is. It is that's very a big, big deal. deal. And yeah. PBS picks yeah. up a, a movie you filmed yeah. with your three person, with your three staff yeah. member <laughs> station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did that give you like more, you know, inspiration to do more of the same type? You know? Yes. It's yeah. A, uh, definitely. Um, it's a lot of work that isn't 
you know, unless there's a lot of volunteer work on it too. Um, it's a, it's, they're they're big projects, so that it takes a lot of resources to um, get volunteers to assist with this, that, this, that, this, that. So um, it's not a, a it's not a super common thing that we are involved with, um, but uh, you know, a local filmmaker trying to make a, a film and he gets funding for it and he needs a place to do rehearsals, he needs a place for, you know, camera rentals and uh, gear rentals, um, uh, you know, uh, casting, uh, you know, we, we were able to assist that project and all of that, so. But that definitely probably was a confidence booster. Yeah, yes. it is, it is, it definitely is, it's, 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 yeah, you know you can create right. great content and it's just putting the right minds together and, yeah, it's and a good setting point as well for volunteers and you know, what you know when we combine it what we could do mm -hmm. you know? yes mm -hmm. very much so and we've uh, over the years we've uh, we've had interns that have come in and been like I want to make a, a, a short film and I don't know how to do it well it starts with writing it so you sit down with them you write it it's a you know eight page ten page fifteen page script um, you say well the next process is to get people to play the actors and get your location and, and all of that and we ended up filming I think we've done two uh, interns um, short films and they both made it into the New Hampshire Film Festival and I mean other festivals around New England so it's cool to have you know PPM TV a local public access channel in these film festivals with all these other you know big name film producers and stuff like that so well, that gives a content creator as well you know you have the experience yeah. Where else would they get that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think it's everyone is inclined to simply turn on their phone and speak to TikTok. Is how all of the, uh, I, I'm probably dating myself, but. <laughs> well, and, and unless <laughs> you're with, in, involved with a film company, you don't have like minds around you that are looking to create projects unless you're in a school setting, which they have a curriculum and they have, you know, we're going to do this and that and this and that. They don't. They don't, ha they don't give you the ability to really have a group of people be able to create a project together and who are interested in creating a project together. And we do at PPM TV, and it's really it's awesome to see. It's good. And I don't, I don't remember. Um, so tell me if someone is not a Portsmouth resident, I assume they can still be members so that if they live in Durham, for example, and are interested, as you say, in they've got an idea for a project and they're they're looking to find the resources for it. Yep. How does that work? Is there like a resident, non-resident, or rate for members, or is it just as if you're going to be a member, it doesn't matter? It's just if you're a member. Okay. You're a member. Um, we know that the Seacoast is kind of lumped in together, and that also pulls in Kittery too, because you know a lot of people who work in Portsmouth yep. live in Kittery. Um, yep. So. You know, we want the Seacoast community to have all the same you know, opportunity as, as anyone else. But I don't think there's any, you know, New York members or anything like that. So it's mainly just Seacoast area, and they come in, they can create their shows. Um, we uh, obviously prefer uh, to be able to air them. Um, some people want to create shows that maybe aren't the number one thing you'd want to put up on the public <laughs> access channel. <laughs> But uh, we do our best to, you know, assess what is and is not going to go on the channel. So um, mainly, we say yes. To most of everything. It's not. It's very. It's very rare someone comes in and wants to do a, a cooking show with roadkill. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Do you, do you partner with other TVs? Like uh, Exeter TV, you mentioned. Yeah, I'm a part of the uh, NHCCM uh, organization, which is all the uh, public access stations in the area. Um, we do share ideas. We we talk. Uh, we do send content to each other. Um, so we get content from you know Exeter TV and, and all that. Um, I mean, not the town meetings or anything like that, but you know locally produced stuff. Because if it's happening in Dover, someone in Portsmouth knows about it, and it's happening in Kittery, someone knows about it in Portsmouth, so um, our, we're geared towards this area. Anything that is going on in this general area, like something's happening in Rye, we don't, we don't want 
you know, we're in, well, it's Portsmouth only. Um, we want those people who are in Rye, if they're covering waves crashing over the water or onto the roads, and they filmed it, and they want to talk about it, come on in, because it's affecting people in Portsmouth and, and all that, so. We were approached with a roadkill show. That was not, that was not <laughs> a joke. I figured. Uh, I'm from that's that's that that's not a joke. I'd watch it. We're in the and that's not a joke. Yeah. <laughs> got a moose today. So what do I do with it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we may have to charge a cleanup fee for that. Yeah. Oh, boy. Watch out for the health department. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, are we... Thanks for coming in. Yeah, the way yeah, we, we have help. Yeah, it was dying, to, yeah. dying to hear what, yeah. what you're all about. I want to come over. I'll, I'll be over. I'll give you a call, Chad. Yeah, let me know. I'm curious. Of course. Careful, we might pull you in even further. You might, yeah. once you, you might. know my background. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Chelmsford. Oh, yeah. Chelmsford Public Access? Yeah. Oh, 30 oh. years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, very nice. So you have, this is in your heart. They were forward thinking down there. Pouring a middle school with a television studio in the basement 40 years ago because wow. yeah, they knew it was going to happen. Wow. It was fun. We had the, we made some calls around because we're all cable cast. Of course, we're different, all using somewhat different systems. We were trying to survey some of these towns mentioned in here to find out what other systems uh, the other stations are using. And we hopped on, or I hopped on, to Salem, New Hampshire's. A cable access station and mm -hmm. it looks like NORAD yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing yeah, yeah. so there are I, there are you wouldn't imagine that cable access some of these cable access stations some have such a wide glorious. Yeah. breadth of resources but yeah so onward and upward all it takes like everything else all it takes is money <laughs> 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 that funny little thing understatement yeah, <laughs> yeah like one of my questions so, was going to be like yeah. so what are one of your challenges but it's, yep. we know I mean, what the challenges are <laughs> <laughs> we do need to keep the meeting but, but, uh, this great. is a broadcast meeting so yes. thank you very much thank Sorry you for having us thank we you. appreciate yeah. you letting us take up your time no problem <laughs> thanks would you uh, anybody like to keep a copy yeah we'll take the yeah, you keep that. I'll keep this one, okay. And I will distribute to anyone who doesn't have this. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Try to stay warm. Hey. Oh, yeah. So we could officially close the public hearing and I, yes, adjourn. Yes, uh, yeah, there are no more, no yep. others. Okay, so uh, motion to close the meeting. Second. All right. All right. Favor? Aye. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you.